Harrison Hot Springs. It has a resort, a surprising obsession with Bigfoot, and lately a very dysfunctional city council. The meeting is not closed to the public. Uh, no, it isn't. You're what? You're going to call the RCMP? The meeting is closed, sir. That was a meeting on February 21st, which was not attended by the mayor. There was another council meeting later that night with the mayor. It went worse. Councillor Fascio, you have been asked to remove yourself from this meeting. Councillor Vidal, you have been asked to lead this meeting. Councillors are having private meetings without the mayor. Senior staff have retired or are on leave, and the new mayor struggled to run public meetings. It's an embarrassment for the village to have four of our elected officials acting in this manner. Things have gotten so bad that Harrison Hot Springs has asked the province for assistance, less than four months into their four-year term. But they're not the only small town in the Lower Mainland that can't seem to run their own affairs. The council requests the assistance of the Ministry of Municipal Affairs to provide a municipal advisor to the village of Lions Bay. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Lions Bay has also used the phone a friend option, and it also happened after an election where a new mayor was elected and most of the senior staff quit or were forced out. Now, the ministry won't say how the meetings are going, and nobody from either village on council is willing to speak on the record. So it's hard to say who is in the right or wrong. But what's happening here are classic challenges with small town politics. First, a new mayor wants to change things, but that's easier said than done. Even people who run for mayor have a misconception about how much power uh, they potentially have. Mayors in BC only have one vote, and other than sharing meetings, no real extra powers. So how do they get their agenda passed? They only have that power of kind of persuasion as opposed to you know, clear uh, direction. And if they can't persuade? Well, in provincial or federal politics, it's set up to have a government in opposition. And if the leader of the government no longer has the votes, there are mechanisms for them to resign or to have an early election to resolve things. But in local politics, it's set up for everyone to work together collegially. And if a mayor doesn't have the votes to do things, they all just have to sit there for the rest of their term. It's part of the reason why some have called on the province to create an ethics commissioner with powers to resolve situations like this. But the province isn't interested. Well, we certainly do as a province place a very high level of autonomy and responsibility on local governments. Uh, we're very reluctant uh, to wade into uh, uh, matters of local government. Which on one hand is very reasonable, but here is a chart. It shows in the last five years the number of lower mainland mayors that got into feuds with councillors that involved lawsuits, non-confidence motions, or people being removed from council. And here are the number of them that won re-election. Feuding councils may make for good drama, but it usually results in short-term employment. Justin McElroy, CBC News, Vancouver.